This and other recent fatal crashes have renewed the call to fix shortcomings and inconsistencies in rules that govern air flights. Gina Mangieri is always investigated. Gina? Well, between Hawaii skydiving and helicopter fatalities and airplane tragedies elsewhere, crash investigators, lawmakers, and victims advocates are questioning why small aircraft operators are not regulated more strictly. It's a clash that has pitted two major federal agencies against each other and has Hawaii's congressional delegation leading the charge for change. Long before Friday's deadly skydive plane crash, the National Transportation Safety Board chronicled problems with parachute aircraft regulations after investigating 32 plane-related accidents that killed 172 parachuters and pilots between 1980 and 2008. Dozens more have died since. Paying passengers should be able to count on an airworthy plane, an adequately trained pilot, a safe operator and adequate federal oversight of those operations. Passengers may not be aware when they board different kinds of aircraft that the stringent training, maintenance, and inspection requirements that cover big commercial airlines called Part 121 regulations don't apply to all smaller charter planes, helicopter tours, or air taxis classified under Part 135. And fewer still are expected of Part 91 operators, the small, non-commercial aircrafts that include skydiving planes. There are still differences in the operations between a parachute jump operation and, say, a Part 135 air tour operator, and we think there shouldn't be differences. Eight out of 11 NTSB suggestions to make jump planes safer were implemented between the industry's membership body called the United States Parachute Association and the Federal Aviation Administration, which licenses air operators. Better seat belts, monitoring and guidance for inspections, and operator education about quality assurance were among the improvements. The USPA tells me just as skydiving itself has become measurably safer over the last several years, and not by a little but a lot, flights on skydiving aircraft are demonstrably safer as well. But for more than a decade, the FAA has not budged on three critical NTSB recommendations covering things like aircraft maintenance, FAA oversight, and pilot training and pilot testing. We would like them to follow through uh, with those, but they have not. The FAA has disputed the NTSB's pilot-related points, saying FAA has no evidence pilots don't have the skills the NTSB wants proven. The FAA also says it can't legally enforce some of the recommendations on Part 91 operators, which includes skydive planes, the lower level of aircraft regulation. If you feel you cannot uh, adequately regulate uh, uh, these operations, which are creating safety and community disruption risks, I'm uh, certainly willing and able to uh, assist in Congress to change your regulatory authority so you can do that. That's Congressman Ed Case, who was already drafting legislation to toughen small carrier aircraft regulations following the deadly April tour helicopter crash in Kailua. Should they be allowed to continue to fly while it gets figured out? You know, that is very much dependent on, on what the NTSB is finding preliminarily. When there is a, a failure of... of of recognition of risk and consequence, uh, that's when you start to think, well, maybe we can't trust these people at all, and maybe we do need to place a moratorium in effect until we figure out what's going on. The FAA tells me they have to have proof of a violation to take such action, and they haven't seen that yet in either the Kailua or Mokulaia cases. It's heartbreaking to see this, and I think that they would at least want us to take the lessons of, of, of this uh, terrible tragedy and apply them so that so that other people uh, do not, you know, suffer the same fate. Now we'll follow up on any changes between the NTSB and the FAA and the status of bills in Congress to make flying more safe. Back to you.